everybody. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this morning. A lot happened last night. Not just with me, but also with the weather. Hence why I wasn't able to stream or make a video, which is really frustrating. But in any case, Category 5 Hurricane Barrel. This was never out of the question, especially, like I said before, with its rapid intensif intensification gene. We anticipated that there was an opportunity, but never in a thousand years that I think it would actually end up happening. We have Jamaica slightly back into the mix here, unfortunately, with its current track, and we will probably be live streaming this tomorrow as well. But hurricane warnings are now in effect for the island nation. And then we also have hurricane watches further off to the to the west here almost said east force of habit <laughs> but in any case though conditions are anticipated to start to deteriorate over towards these regions within the next 48 hours here really within the next 24 so we'll see this probably get upgraded to hurricane warning soon we also have tropical storm warnings over here towards haiti and dominican republic you're not going to get a direct impact from the eye wall itself but as we all know with these tropical systems the impacts often spread much further out than this little area right here which is what the cones for so that being said expect some squally weather today if you are in dominican republic and haiti over the course of the next 12 to 24 hours uh, be on the lookout for some possible tropical tornadoes main threat is going to be heavy flooding rains and also damaging winds you are within that point where you will be experiencing tropical storm force winds you will be experiencing them pretty soon actually now looking at barrels intensity, so we continue to go forward here. Right now we're sitting at 165 mile per hour category five right now. So it's still just mind blowing. My mind just shut as a thought that we already have one this early. So this is a wake up, like I said before, a few days ago, a couple other videos is a wake up call. Good news with this storm is we are anticipating this to start slowly weakening today even. By two o'clock, they're forecasting a storm at 155 miles an hour went 155 mile per hour winds then by the time we get towards jamaica it's at a lower end category three 120 mile per hour winds and this will continue to weaken thankfully and a big part of that and we mentioned that in yesterday's uh, video is the wind shear the wind shear is going to be pretty powerful over towards this region here and while it's not going to completely stop the storm it is going to slow things down so this rapid strengthening isn't going to be occurring in this case here. We will still have a powerful storm as this heads towards Mexico, unfortunately. So if you're over towards Cancun and Belize, you need to be watching this storm. Track is slightly changed based off of what I've been seeing here. Whereas yesterday, we're a little further to the south. We kind of made that jog back up to the north. As I've said before, these tropical systems, especially as they get established, they like to wobble a little bit. So what we see now may change just slightly a little bit. We do maybe, and while this isn't a guarantee, we do maybe need to watch over towards Texas as time goes on. There is a chance that this storm could drift back towards the northeast here and maybe the southern Texas coast could be affected by the eye. I do think you're going to end up seeing some impacts. It's a pretty sizable looking storm. If you look on satellite, you can see it clearly. Look at how well defined that eye is, by the way. It's, an, it's absolutely incredible to see. Like I said, this is only July 2nd. It's absolutely insane. But another thing we're going to quickly talk about here, is we got the severe weather threat for today. I do intend to be live for this one. I was really bummed that I missed yesterday's stream. But in any case, though, today's threat is a damaging wind generated enhanced risk. We do have a 5% tornado threat as well to go with this area and also a 15% hail threat to go along with this one. This is going to be our main culprit right here, this trough that will be coming in throughout the course of the day. It's really gonna be it's really gonna be uh, generated by this and also a short wave that's gonna be uh, popping up a little bit later this afternoon. And this is where our chance for severe weather increases. Now the timing, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna see development probably around about four o'clock central, maybe three o'clock. It always kind of varies a little bit with these setups. Sometimes those short waves will get pop, get uh, firing off earlier here, and usually that'll kickstart the initiation for storms. 
The main thing that I'm also concerned about as we continue to go forward, of course, is that low level jet, which is going to help increase that tornado threat. It doesn't look like we have a whole lot in place early on within the setup. Of course, as we all know, low level jet tends to kick in a little bit later in the evening. So wouldn't be surprised to see a continuation of that threat a little bit further off to the east here. But there is a big inhibiting factor as we get further off to the east as well. So the window's kind of narrow for severe weather actually today. We do get ample moisture here, which is, I mean, we're pretty much following the uh, acronym slim here. We already just looked at our wind shear and we have some. It's not the most incredible setup, as we all know. It's no mega troughs or anything like that, but you have the lifting mechanism. We got to see all that. But now we're going to the end where we're looking at moisture and we do have ample moisture. Instability is there as well, but not in major abundance. We do get up to about 2,000, 2,500 joules per kilogram, but look what happens, especially as we get towards O1Z, which would be about eight o'clock central. You can see that things are starting to taper off pretty quickly here by the time we get towards 11. We still have a couple of pockets here and there, but not quite as much in the way of opportunity for severe weather. Another reason why I'm thinking that we're slow down in activity here is we're actually going to look at convective inhibition. So this is another great way of looking for what's called a cap. Convective inhibition basically is almost like putting the lid on the atmosphere, so to speak. And while we get a little bit of a breakthrough earlier in the afternoon, this is 20 to 21 Z, watch what happens as we get later into the evening. Cap starts to build back in so by the time we get towards about nine o'clock, even though some of these storms may already be established, we may not get any new development. And then that cap also builds further off to the east here. So I do think that once these storms get going, once we lose the sun, that's pretty much going to be the end of it. Now, looking at some other parameters here, we do have a 5% area, but like I said, the parameters aren't incredible with this setup. And even the significant tornado parameter doesn't really reflect anything incredible. There is a couple of areas of interest over here, mainly going to be looking towards maybe southwestern and south central parts of Iowa. And then as time goes on, look what happens. It kind of just drops off here. We do have decent bulk shear here, especially at the low to the lower levels of the atmosphere, which is what I was looking for mainly in regards to damaging winds across the region here. I think it's going to be, I really think we're going to put more focus on areas such as maybe central and maybe south central parts of Iowa. Eventually, I do think we get maybe northern, north central Missouri to get into the action as well as we go forward here. And then lastly, of course, we're going to go ahead and look at the radar here because I am on a little bit of a time crunch. So as we continue to go forward here, this is the last night storm system clearing the area here. And there is a variable with this of uncertainty regarding the system here, because I do think that with the amount of rain cooled air in this region here, we can get storms to fire. But my question is, will this end up hampering some of these storms over here by using up some of the energy? That's why there's really not a whole lot of instability here to begin with, because we're gonna be dealing with rain and clouds over towards Southern parts of Iowa all throughout the day. As we get later into the evening here, I do have some interest in this area over towards Missouri. And then of course, as we go further off to the east, you can see these storms weaken pretty rapidly here. So we'll just have to see how things develop from that point here. We'll probably be going live around about maybe four or five o'clock Eastern time and just seeing how things develop from that point here. Don't expect it to be a long live stream, but in any case though, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I got to run. I hope to see you guys this afternoon. It's been Tyler Metalhead Weatherman. Hope you enjoyed the update, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.